I am Dr. Sharjeel and you are watching my YouTube channel. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. So let's discuss the challenging case 181. I got many comments on this case. Aravind Kumar diagnosed it as a case of acanthamoeba keratitis. Some people called it infectious fungal keratitis. Now it is definitely a case of keratitis uh, but not acanthamoeba or fungal. Infectial, infectious keratitis are usually central and uh, eye is not that much quiet. There is inflammation, pain, redness. Powell Coleman from Poland, my friend and Asen Joya correctly called it peripheral keratitis. Now, usually peripheral uh, keratitis is of uh, autoimmune variety and rarely infectious, but trauma to the peripheral cornea can cause uh, peripheral keratitis. Uh, foreign body in the peripheral cornea can lead to infectious keratitis uh, and uh, at periphery, but in such cases you will find uh, hypopion uh, anterior chamber activity as well. So the differentials of this case should be peripheral ulcerative keratitis PAC with or without systemic diseases, Muran's ulcer. Now these are the peripheral thinning conditions in a inflamed or hot eye. Traumatic keratitis as well and the other conditions which are in the differentials but are associated with the peripheral thinning with the cold eye these are delen post pterygium surgery or any non wetting condition tedians marginal degeneration senile furrow degeneration pellucid marginal degeneration now how to differentiate all these well first uh, consider the eye non inflamed cold so the first differential comes tyrian marginal degeneration now it is a painless progressive condition uh, the thinning of the peripheral corneal stroma with intact corneal epithelium but it begins superiorly with overlying vascularization and leading, leading edge of lipids. Now superior thinning causes against the rule astigmatism patients are prone to corneal perforation with trivial trauma just like in PUC patients. So here it is not terrian marginal degeneration the superior cornea is okay and it is inferior temporal now the next is furrow degeneration which is a circumferential thinning of the peripheral cornea between the limbus and arcus senilis that usually occur in elderly Thinning is shallow, non-progressive and visually insignificant. Now that does not uh, lead to perforation. So our patient is not that much old, 40 years old and uh, the thinning is extreme about to perforate. So furrow degeneration is also ruled out. Then comes the pellucid marginal degeneration. Now, our patient have got inferior thinning and here in pellucid marginal degeneration which is, which is a cousin of keratoconus it have got also inferior thinning severe peripheral thinning usually inferiorly within few millimeters of limbus there is no redness no pain no inflammation but significant irregular astigmatism which can be confirmed with topography which will show crab claw pattern so it is not a uh, pellucid marginal degeneration as well. Then comes the delen. Now delen is a corneal thinning in an area of non-wetting that thins and then breaks down. 
now it uh, as it's a very large uh, area uh, it uh, can be delen but it is usually post surgery when there is uneven surface of the cornea so the tear film is not uniformly spread the treatment is lubrication um, and uh, it usually occurs after incomplete removal of pterygium or some other uh, limbal growth so delen is also ruled out so these are all the thinnings in a non-inflammatory or cold eyes and now thinning in hot eyes so the most common is a peripheral ulcer keratitis so when you consider puck you should look for systemic diseases like rheumatoid arthritis look for rheumatoid hands and feet rheumatoid nodules you can also do labs rheumatoid factor and all the other uh, systems involved in rheumatoid arthritis uh, then if uh, rheumatoid arthritis is ruled out then go look for vaginars you can do c anca test uh, chest x-ray or ct chest uh, because uh, you have to rule out vaginars because uh, it's a life threatening condition if you miss now when you rule out vaginars and rheumatoid then also check for hepatitis c because one form of peripheral keratitis is associated with hepatitis c and responds very well to interferon therapy so rule out all these conditions uh, peripheral ulcerative keratitis uh, is a painless uh, condition uh, and uh, sometimes they present uh, with sudden perforation uh, leading to decrease of vision uh, they are unaware of the thinned peripheral cornea so when you rule out uh, peripheral ulcerative keratitis uh, then suspect murans which is a painful peripheral uh, keratitis uh, with no systemic uh, disease the sclera is not involved in peripheral ulcerative keratitis the sclera is also involved so the murans begins in periphery spread circumferentially as well as centripetally with leading undermined edge of de epithelialized tissue and uh, topical steroids and lubricants are given for muran ulcer uh, for puck systemic steroids uh, and treat the systemic disease uh, oral doxycycline and vitamin c for uh, stopping the uh, have got anti collagenase activity so these are the peripheral uh, conditions uh, in a hot eye inflamed eye peripheral ulcerative keratitis uh, with or without systemic uh, disease murans ulcer uh, then traumatic uh, peripheral keratitis uh, in all these uh, the eye will be angry looking now our patient had uh, very deep uh, inferior uh, impending perforating peripheral uh, keratitis uh, so for such conditions uh, you can use glue amniotic membrane pedicle conjunctival conjunctival flaps so i used amniotic membrane first patch of amniotic membrane above the lesion then performed pedicle conjunctival flap and above the pedicle conjunctival flap again i patched amniotic membrane so we diagnosed him as a case of peripheral uh, ulcerative keratitis without uh, systemic uh, disease and as uh, it was impending perforation so i had to perform amg and pedicle conjunctival flap along with systemic steroids and we will assess his condition thank you very much